it's Dave Thomas again, and today I'm going to be building the Daedalus two-stage model rocket that's put out by Rocketarium. Rocketarium provides a nice detailed set of instructions with a parts list in the back, and so you'll want to check and make sure you have everything. There are three body tubes here, so the longest one is for the sustainer stage, the smallest one is for the booster stage, and then the, the medium sized one is an extension of the main sustainer stage that will contain the parachute. There is also a coupler for the booster stage and this might be inside one of the tubes so if you can't find it right away check inside. And then many of the smaller assemblies are packaged into their own little kits. So the ejection baffle here is pre-packaged. And then we have uh, two motor mount packages here. One is for the sustainer, one is for the booster. All right, we have two sets of fins. And the, the larger fins are for the sustainer. And they also include this little stick here. This will be for applying glue. The smaller fins go to the booster. And then we have a package that includes the shock cord and launch lugs. We have the nose cone, the parachute, nice brilliant blue, and then the only decoration is a single Daedalus sticker here. Now, as I mentioned before, the instructions are very detailed and you want to make sure that you follow them exactly because some of the parts are necessary to mark the next set of parts. So you want to do this in sequence and not skip around very much. Um, and those of you who have seen my other videos, there are sometimes I do skip around. And so um, there are places where that's appropriate. In this case, we're going to want to follow the directions as written. So the first thing we need to do is mark the airframe and the booster. And so on the back page here we have a fin marking guide. And we'll just cut this out. If you don't want to ruin your instructions, you can just make a copy of this and cut it out. Now we'll want a little piece of masking tape handy here. All right, so now we're going to go back to our sustainer tube here. And we're going to wrap this around the aft end, which is either end, whichever one you prefer. masking tape on there. And now we'll just mark the fin lines. Oops. Okay. All right, and this is the launch lug line. So I'm just going to put a little LL here so I know it's not a fin. And then we can just slip that off. All right, and then we want to run the fin lines about a third of the way up the tube, and the launch lug line should go the entire length of the tube. And you can use a door frame for this, or if you have one of these handy dandy tube markers, they work well. Okay, so starting with my launch lug line. 
it's going to go the entire length. Okay, and then each fin line needs to go up about a third of the way. So about to there. They can be longer, it won't hurt anything. They do need to be long enough that you'll be able to see the line beyond the fin. Okay, so we've got markings there. <clears throat> okay, and they call this the main tube in the instructions, so I'll try to use that same terminology. Now, to put the booster assembly together, we simply need to take the blue coupler here and measure its middle. So it's two inches long. We want to measure that at one inch. Now be careful here in the instructions, and this caught me off guard once. Um, they're showing the dimension here for the coupler insertion the inch and a quarter from the coupler onto the booster tube, this is where the vent hole for the gap staging is going to be. Okay, so there are two measurements on this illustration and you gotta make sure you're looking at the right one. Here I'm gonna place a bead of glue just inside the forward end of the booster tube. And the forward end is whichever end you like the best. Okay, and now I'm going to take this and kind of give it a back and forth motion as I insert it. You can even twist it around. All right, and then bring it to rest at your inch mark there. Okay, and then you see, see you can see that. I've got a lot of excess glue there. So I'm the first of all, I'm just going to take my finger and remove some of that. All right, and then I'm going to stand this coupler side down to let it dry so that any excess glue does not drip inside of the booster tube. And when we come back, then we will uh, apply the lines from the main tube onto the booster tube. The booster assembly now has dried enough that it's not going to move. And so I'm going to slide that into the sustainer tube, or main tube here. And now I'll put a little piece of masking tape on this so that it doesn't move while we're transferring the lines. So I'm going to come back to my line guide here. And now I'm simply going to extend each of my lines from the sustainer to the booster. And once again I'll mark this one as the launch lug line so I don't get confused with the others. Now remove my tape. Slide that back out. All right, coming back. Okay, on the launch lug line we need to add a vent hole at an inch and a quarter from the forward end of the coupler. Oops! Damn it! 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 Damn it. 
Let's see. Now that I've transferred my markings to the booster tube assembly here, um, next is we need to make a vent hole on the launch lug line. So that's going to be here. And this is going to be an inch and a quarter from the coupler. So that's an inch and a quarter. So this is going to be right here. And then we'll put another one 180 degrees from that. Okay, which is on the fin line here. So that's going to be right about there. Let's see how close my estimate was. Uh, within about a 30 second, so that's pretty good. Okay, and so what we need to do is drill a 3 16 inch hole through each side, and these will be uh, providing the venting for the gap staging that's used to go from the booster stage engine to the sustainer stage engine. So I'm going to go off camera and drill these. I put my holes in here and you can see on the side there's a little bit of a raised edge here where the drill bit went through. And on the inside, let me see if I can get the, the camera to focus this close. Okay, you can see in here where the drill has forced material inward. Now, most likely, you can probably just ignore this completely. But if you want to neaten things up a little bit, what I'm going to do is place a little bit of super glue around the opening and just let it absorb into the raised areas there of the paper. I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. And what this will do is soak into those raised fibers and then harden. And this will make it very easy to sand them down so that they are flush with the coupler and the tube there. Okay, so I'm going to set this down again. I'm going to put it on a paper towel so we don't end up with super glue on my mat. Okay, this will need to dry for about half an hour, and when we come back, we can sand that down and then move on to the motor mounts. The super glue is hardened, so now I'm just going to take a piece of fine sandpaper and stick that down in the tube there. And just sand down the excess material that has been forced inward. And you don't even have to get it completely flat, just take the sharp edges off. And then once we have the motor mounts installed, if we need to remove more material, we can do it at that point. take some extra fine sandpaper to do the outside here. These I do want smooth, but I don't want to wear away the body tube either. Okay, so that part's done, and we're going to move on to the motor mounts. So at step two in the instructions, it specifies to use the kit here that ends in B for booster motor mount. So we'll just pop this open. So, 
according to the instructions, we're going to place a ring of glue down in one end of this. And then our spacer here will be used to push the engine block up into the glue. All right, so we'll push it in like this, and this is going to go all the way flush with the aft end here. And then that will put our thrust ring here into the glue. Okay, so we will go ahead and do that. down right about there. We don't want to get it down too far. Alright, so now I'm going to put in the thrust ring. Okay, and I'll use the table here so I get it exactly flush. And you can see that pushes up into the glue. And now we'll remove that quickly so that any glue that's still on the inside does not get stuck in there. All right, next we need to cut a slit 95 millimeters or three and, a quarter, three and three quarters inches from the aft end. And this is where the um, engine hook is going to go. So aft end. And 95 millimeters is right there. And if everything is lining up correctly, when I put the knife through this, it should end up right above the thrust ring. Okay. I think my thrust ring moved up just a little bit there. I'm just going to widen that enough to allow the entry of the engine hook. Okay, let's just give this a test fit. Alright, and so it's come out right on top of the engine block or thrust ring there, just as it should. Okay, and extends down below here. Right, the glue is set on my thrust ring here, and we've got the um, engine hook in place. But there's a problem. There's supposed to be a retainer ring that fits over the um, engine hook here and keeps it from sliding around too much. So normally the um, centering rings would go on about here about here and then there would be a uh, retaining ring here that, that basically keeps this from wobbling around too much. I checked with Rocketarium uh, apparently they had a batch of kits that were missing that particular component and they were really good about sending out the new one right away so if your kit has this problem don't be afraid to contact them. Their, their customer service is excellent that way. So I'm going to just set this aside for a day or two while I wait for that part. And even though the directions say you shouldn't skip around, we're going to skip around a little bit. okay? Because this is actually an independently built part. This is the ejection baffle. It comes with its own instructions, so we're not really skipping around too much. This simply consists of a coupler here and then two ejection baffle plates. And so you can dry fit these together. One plate goes in the one end here. And this is the plate that will um, face the aft end of the rocket. And then the other plate 
will have this screw eye in it and I'm going to go ahead and just thread it first and then that will fit in the forward end and the screw eye will be a use, used to attach the shock cord onto the base of the rocket and then that will extend up through the extension body tube that will contain the parachute and connect also to the nose cone. Okay, so here all we need to do is apply some glue, either white glue or wood glue is fine. Um, wood glue does tend to be a little bit heat resistant and so you might want to use that if you have it but generally there's not going to be enough heat that a good layer of white glue won't hold up to it either. Okay, so I'm going to put this right on the inside. We don't want to get this too thick because we don't want it so thick that it gets up inside the baffle holes, but we do want it to be very strong. Okay, so I'm going to place my aft baffle in first. And I'm going to move that to just inside. I want a little bit of an edge showing there and that will allow me to put a fillet in there very easily. So I'm just going to let that dry for a moment. On the other baffle here, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue into the hole. And now I'm going to go ahead and thread the screw eye in there. I'm going to put this in just until I have like one layer of threads left showing here and we've got the rest of the uh, threads coming out the other side. Okay, um, This next step is actually completely optional because you're never going to see it. Um, I, I'm just in the habit of putting glue on top of threads anywhere in a rocket, uh, mainly because in high power rockets we often have things like rail button threads that stick through and I just get in the in the habit of, of putting a layer of glue over them so that they don't catch things. And I said this is actually completely superfluous in this because this is going to be showing facing inward and nothing is going to come in contact with that screw eye. It's just an idiosyncrasy on my part. We're all a little bit crazy. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of glue on this side. Again, we want enough to make a strong joint, but we don't want so much that it's just going to go pushing up through there. And that may be a little bit much. I'm going to spread that around my finger a bit. And we definitely don't want any on the outside of the coupler. So now we'll just pop that one in and kind of the same way I'm going to leave a millimeter or two of edge around that. Okay. And now I'm just going to let this dry for a few minutes and when I come back I'll apply fillets to the edges here. Okay, now I'm applying the fillet and here we just need to be careful that we don't fill up the holes here, so I'm using just a, a small amount of glue. And in the instructions for this, they actually show another way of doing this, where instead of putting the plate straight in like I did, they put it in at an angle and then um, flip it up to vertical, and that's supposed to help scrape some of the glue forward so that it forms its own fillet. However, I think that's only going to give you one, give it a fillet on one side. You'll still have to do some edge work here. Again, the main thing here is to make sure that you don't get glue 
on the outside of the coupler, otherwise it may not fit in the tubes correctly. And then the same thing on the other side. Now this side of the baffle, the um, holes are a lot farther away from the edges, so you can use a bit more glue here without worrying about plugging up the holes. And this is the side that's going to bear the brunt of the ejection gases, so I'm actually going to just give a, a light coating of glue all over and it will help protect the wood a little bit. Right, again, make sure that we don't have anything on the outside edge. And once again, this can be put aside to dry. As promised, Rocketerium sent me a replacement um, retaining ring here, or locking ring, uh, just a couple of days after I had notified them that it was missing from the kit. So we are ready to go again. And now I am looking at this part of the instructions here. So we need to measure 6 millimeters from the end, the aft end, it's going to be right there. And that's where the um, centering ring will go. And then we need also 25 millimeters from the aft end, and that is where that locking ring will go. And then up on the forward end, we need 19 millimeters. Right there, and that will be for the forward centering ring. All right, now, the forward centering ring is the one that has a small notch and a hole in it. The aft entering, uh, centering ring has the larger of the notches there. And so I'm just going to dry fit everything first of all, because I don't want any more surprises. It's actually you know, on that side and then up here. Okay, that's going to go to the mark that way. Okay, so that's how it should look. And now we're just going to run some glue around these and slide them back into place. Alright, so for each of these, I'm just going to move the ring a little bit out of position here. And then we will run a bead of glue. All around the circumference. Doesn't matter if you get a little bit on that clip there, because it won't adhere to the steel anyway. Alright, and I'm just going to move that up into the glue. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing here for the locking ring. And since it doesn't have a notch, I'm kind of twisting it a little bit as I come to the line. And that's just going to distribute the glue better. Okay, and then for this one, More. This one does have a notch in it that's over the retaining hook, so I really can't twist it too much. Although I didn't quite get the notch where I needed to. I'll pull that off real quick. 
There we go. And I'm right back on my line. I'm just going to take my finger and turn the excess glue into fillets. Fill in that side. set that to dry. Alright, next in our steps is to assemble the sustainer or second stage motor mount and this is in the bag with the S on the end of the number. Inside it looks almost identical to the booster stage uh, except that both of the uh, rings are identical in this case. There is no gray retainer uh, ring or locking ring and that is intentional for this part. Uh, both kits have these orange adapter rings. These are simply for putting um, D engines into the E engine size mount. These can be set aside until you're ready to launch. All right. And these, this will be done just like we did the other one. So we'll have the same yellow spacer. And we simply use that to push the engine block up so that when it's flush at this end, the engine block is where it needs to be. And in this case, I'm just going to back that back down a little bit so that my spacer is sticking out a little. And now I'm going to apply my bead of glue directly to the end here. I'll go back down. And then I can just push the um, engine block right up back into it. A little sloppy there. All right, so I'm just going to spread that around on the inside. All right, so now I've got glue on the edge, and now I can just push this up, and that's going to push my ring right up into the glue. I'm going to go ahead and form a fillet there. Okay, and now I can take my spacer directly out, and I'm going to let that dry. Now to mark the tube for the engine clip, I'm going to put the, we have to go back to the previous step here. So remember that was 95 millimeters from the aft. So I'm just going to put my ruler on here again. Right there. Alright, and then we'll just cut a little slot there. Feels like I'm right at it. Right, and I'm just going to poke in the engine clip. Just like that. And if we look up here, it is right on the forward edge of my thrust ring. Alright, back to the other side. Okay, the other measurement we need here will be from the aft end as well. And this will be for the aft centering ring. This needs to be at 28 millimeters. Right there. The forward centering ring, they don't have an exact measurement for. It's just going to go right over the uh, clip there. And since these are identical, we'll just put one on there. All right, so I'm just going to slide that on the forward end. And then run a bead of glue around here. All right, and then just put that back into position. Check around, make sure we're reasonably straight. All right, and then I'm just going to fillet that glue in. I think I just made a new verb. Alright, 
and then for this one, the ring is going to be forward of the mark when it gets on. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. Okay, I'm going to slide it even more forward. And again, we'll just run a bead of glue here. My mark is almost covered by the glue, but I can still see it. So that's going to go right there. And once more, I'm just going to fill that material in, like so. Okay, I will just check everything once more, and we'll set that one aside to dry as well. Since we are working with wood fins, you may want to apply some sanding sealer to them before we go through the process of sanding and shaping the fins and then attaching them to the uh, body tubes. So if you're going to do some sealing of the fins, this would be a good time to do that so that the sealer has time to dry, be sanded down, recoated, and resanded. And then by the time we get the motor mounts glued into the body tubes, those fins will be ready. My motor mounts have completely dried now. And so we're going to stick these into the two um, tubes here. We'll start with the booster tube. And they suggest making a mark here at three and three and a half inches from the aft end. Now these are just going to give you um, estimates of where to place the glue. And you can erase these later. But what we're going to do is then put a band of glue in here between those two lines all around the inside. And then we'll slide the motor mount in partly and then we'll also put a bead of glue just inside the aft end here and then we'll complete the installation by sliding this in all the way okay until this is flush now I'm meeting a little bit of resistance here and it's from the glue that kind of got um, aft of the coupler there so what I'll need to do here is simply sand a little bit around the forward uh, centering ring until it fits up in there. I'm using some 100 grit sandpaper here, and this doesn't have to be really pretty. We just need to take some off. that's not quite perpendicular it's not a big deal there we go okay so they include that little balsa stick for doing this. You can also just use a long applicator or a dowel or whatever you got handy. And so what I'm going to do here is simply take my applicator, that's where I want to put the glue, and then I can hold my thumbnail at that point, and then as I, if I move this around like this, that will put the glue exactly between those two. Now you don't want to be sloppy about this, but you don't want to skimp on it either. 
Alright, so I'm going to find my mark again here. Alright, we'll take a look inside. Probably use a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty healthy. Alright, so now I'm going to put in just to there. And now I will add another ring of glue just on the inside here. Okay, so now I can just move that in. Gonna, hard to see this. Here's a flat surface. I'm just going to use this. I can't just put it on the tail because of the engine hook there. All right, but that should allow me to get a nice flush look. And then when this dries, we can add a little bit of a fillet right in here. I'm ready to put the sustainer motor mount into the sustainer body tube. And we're going to put two bands of glue in here, but not at the same time. We're going to first put in the upper band of glue that will hold the forward ring here. And then we'll slide in partially the motor mount and then put the second band of glue right around here at the edge. And so you may want to make a mark on the outer body tube here, just to give you an idea of where that glue is going to go. And so it's going to go up here at about three and a half inches, or about 89 millimeters. And you want to erase that after we're done here, just so you don't confuse yourself as to, why did I make that mark? Okay, so I'm going to use an applicator to do this. And so I'm going to put the tip of my applicator there at the three and a half inch mark, and then mark it on the shaft with my thumb. And now I can simply dip this into my glue. And the idea here is to only get the glue up inside in our ring and not in the rest of the tube. Uh, and this is what the little um, spare piece of balsa was intended for. Is if you don't have your, an applicator like this, you can use that little balsa stick. Okay, I'm just looking up here to see where I need more. Okay, so that's that part, and now I'm going to slide this in roughly an inch or so. I just need to get the first centering ring pass there. And now I'm going to get a little more glue, and this is going to go right on the inside edge. And if I get some on the motor mount, it's not going to interfere with anything. And as we push the entire motor mount in, then this will push the glue forward as well. Okay, so I'm going to get that in. And once I've got this ring, centering ring passed, okay, it's a little bit tight. What I'm going to do here is just take my thumbnail, and I'm just going to kind of chamfer out the edge here. That's going to make it fit easier. And I'm just going to push this in, and this needs to be flush with the aft end of the tube here. Um, you can even, even inset it just a little bit, it won't hurt anything that way. Uh, but if it's sticking out, it may run into the booster engine tube when the whole thing's assembled. Alright, so there I've got that all nice and flush. Now I opted to treat my fins with sanding sealer 
before getting them ready here. So these have already been sealed and re-sanded. And for the booster fins, they indicate rounding the leading edge, which is the actually the square edge. So the, the notch back here will be to the, the trailing side like this. All right, and I've already gone and rounded the leading edge on this. Um, when we get to the sustainer fins, we have two options. Uh, one is to actually taper the leading edge of the fin like they show here, or they also indicate that you can round the fins as well. Um, this is going to give you better aerodynamics. Rounding the fins is going to give you greater strength. And since I am one that often breaks fins, I'm going to opt for the greater strength there. So for our booster section, um, we need to come back to our fin lines here. And we're going to measure half an inch from the aft end. And that will be the um, aft attachment point for each fin. If I just get that to hold still there. Okay, so I just need to do this on each fin line. Okay, so the fins will be mounted like this, and we'll have that half inch gap there between the aft end of the rocket and the uh, aft edge of the fin. Right, and I'm going to just take a look at something here. Okay, so it's got pretty good contact there, and what I'm looking at is kind of in cross section. Something you can do here is take some sandpaper, wrap it around the body tube, and just give a couple of strokes to the root edge um, on the sandpaper here. And the idea is to impart the same radius to this edge as the tube has to give greater contact to the gluing edge. The drawback is you got to make sure that you keep that fin pretty perpendicular as you scrape it back. And if you don't feel conf confident doing that, just skip this part. Okay. And I'm not going to put a, a really deep edge into it here. I'm just, just enough that it's going to bind a bit better. Um, this is also taking off some of the soot from the laser cutting as well, which is also a good idea, regardless of whether you round it or make it flat. Okay, so I'm not going to get too heavily involved into that. And the other thing to do here before we glue the fins on is take your sandpaper and just roughen up the cardboard tube just a little bit right where the fins are going to attach. And this just makes it easier to glue. Um, this is something you, you can do on just about any rocket kit that has glued on fins. I forget to do it most of the time, but it's, it's actually a really good technique. And it does mean you may need to redraw your lines, depending on how deeply you sanded it here. I've got enough I can still see it, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about that. So now I'm going to get my glue. And as you've seen me do, do before in these videos, I'm going to put a bead along here on the fin edge. And then I am going to place that against the body tube and then bring it back off and allow that to get tacky for about 60 seconds and then I'll put that back on. Okay, 60 seconds have passed. So now we'll just put this right back on. All right, and we're going to check and make sure that we're perpendicular and straight. 
Okay, and we'll just let this dry for a few minutes and then proceed to the other fins. Um, I'll go ahead and do that off camera and when we come back we'll do the same thing with, with the sustainer stage. As I get ready to put the sustainer fins on, I'm going to go ahead and roughen up the tube again just like we did before. And I'm try and get a, an idea of how far up we need to go about to there. Again, you don't have to go really deep with this. Just roughen up that surface. Now, the instructions here show that these fins are going to fit flush with the aft end. Okay. Now, before I do this, I want to at least mark where the launch lug is going to be. Okay, so one launch lug on the launch lug line here is going to be flush with the aft end. That's a really easy one. The forward launch lug, though, needs to be a foot from the aft end, so 12 inches here. And I just want to mark it now because it's going to be easier to do this before the fins are in the way. So my other launch lug will go right there. Okay, now I'm not going to, you don't need to put the launch lug on yet. Um, put the fins on first. Uh, but I will go ahead and also roughen the area where the launch lug is going to be for the same reason, just to give it a little more holding power. And now we can go ahead and put on the fins and the launch lock. For the sustainer stage fins, I'm going to do these pretty much the same way that I just did with the boosters. Um, the difference here is that the, the fin does attach flush with the aft end of the body tube there. But I'll just repeat this in the same way. With a bead of glue here on the fin edge. Okay, attaching that to my line, bring it back off, and then letting that wait for 60 seconds and putting it back on. And I'm going to continue this um, with the three fins. I said this is essentially the same process as we did with the booster. And then once these fins are on and drying, we'll come back and put the fillets on the booster stage. While my sustainer fins are drying, I'm putting on the fillets for the booster stage. So I'm just smoothing in some wood glue into the corners here along the edges. do it. I will let this set aside to dry. My fins have dried and I've applied the fillets already to these and so it's all looking good. Uh, you might notice that my fins are not quite flush down here and that's because the first fin somehow during dry, uh, drying had just kind of edged back a little bit. I decided the easiest thing to do is just make all the fins the same way. It shouldn't affect the uh, center of gravity or center of pressure significantly either way. So really the last thing to do to the main part of the body tube here is to add the launch lugs. And so bringing out our instructions once more, uh, one launch lug simply goes right at the base of the tube and the other one goes 12 inches forward from that. And we put our lines on earlier 
So now we just need to glue these on. All right, so here is my mark for the forward one, and the aft one will go back here, and I've already sanded the body tubes there a little bit for better glue adhesion. Okay, and I'm going to put these on pretty much the same as the fins, except I won't worry about pulling them back off to letting them get tacky since they don't have a, a really tall profile, they usually stick fairly well all by themselves. So we'll put the first one on right here. And then glue on the second one. It's time to refill my glue bottle. Okay, and that one will go right here. Now I'm just going to sight along both of them here. And just make sure everything's aligned. Check it from the other end the same way. Okay, so now I can just let those dry. At this point we have now are four main pieces of the rocket. The, the main section or sustainer section here, the booster, the nose cone, and the extension that will house the recovery system. And we're about to put all these together. So depending on how you want to finish this, you may want to paint these sections before you put the whole rocket together. And that's just going to depend on your own paint scheme. So if you want the body to be one color and the booster to be another color and the extension tube to be another color, etc. It's going to be a lot easier to paint them now before you assemble them all um, rather than trying to have to mask everything off after the whole rocket's been assembled. If you're planning on painting it all the same color, then by all means assemble it first and paint it later. Okay. Um, so we'll also need our ejection baffle here which will join the two tubes. One other thing to consider uh, if you're going to paint the nose, and I would suggest you do, it's not really a, a pretty nose cone by itself, um, you'll need to do a little sanding here to remove the seam on both sides of that and then also sand throughout uh, just with some fine or extra fine sandpaper to give some tack there to allow the, the paint to grab on to the nose cone better. Okay, so at this point I am going to install the baffle and then we'll put all the tubes together. So to start with on the baffle we need to find the midpoint here. So we'll just measure this. It's at five centimeters so we'll just put a line here at two and a half. And the end without the screw eye will fit into the main body tube of the rocket here. And then all we need to do to install that is put on a bead of glue here. And this can be fairly near the edge. Okay, and then we're just going to insert this. And I'm just going to turn it as I do back and forth to evenly distribute the glue. And then stop at my mark. And then we'll just set this aside and let it dry for a few minutes. While the baffle was drying inside the tube here, I also went ahead and applied the fillets to my launch lugs. And these are put on the same way I did with the fins. Okay, just use some glue and a finger to smooth them in. And now we're going to add the shock cord to the eyelet here. 
And what I'm going to do first of all is just pass one end of this through the extension tube so it's in position and we don't have to worry about trying to string it through later. And then I'm going to take one end of the shock cord here and tie it to the eyelet. And I'll just use a double knot or two half hitches here. And go ahead and leave yourself a, a centimeter or two of rubber out here, at least initially, so that as you tighten this, it doesn't slip past the knot. And then just for good measure, I'm going to put a little drop of glue on this. Uh, you can use wood glue or white glue for this. Do not use super glue. It will eat away at the rubber. Okay, I'm just going to work that through the knot. Um, under normal circumstances, there's really no way to replace this easily. Um, there is a way to do it, but it's really, really time-consuming and frustrating. So you want to make sure this is in good and well and strong before we uh, attach it to the extension tube. Then that is our next task. So here I'm going to draw in that shock cord as much as I can. Um, we'll, we'll end up getting it a little bit gluey most likely, but that's not a big deal. And here, just so I have a little bit more control, I'm going to use a cotton applicator to do the gluing. So here, I'm just going to put the glue right on the inside edge again, much like I did with the other side. I'm going to try and keep the rubber out as much as I can. Okay, and now I'm, as I move this in, I'm holding on to the shock cord to keep it suspended. And now I'll just insert the tube, give it a little twist here. And actually line up my spirals, you don't need to. And then over here on the other end, I'm, I'm pulling the shock cord a little bit just to make sure it stays straight and as much out of the glue as possible. And I'm just going to hold this for a moment because that, it was just a little bit loose on that coupler. All right, our next step is to assemble the parachute. And those of you who have seen my other videos know that I don't like tying the parachute directly to the nose cone. If you prefer to do that, just follow the directions right here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, what I prefer to do is put a snap swivel on. So I'm going to gather my parachute here in the middle. And at the other end, I've got all of the shroud lines gathered together. And the idea here is just to pull everything so that all of the corners here are at roughly the same spot. And so I'm going to gather the other end here into a small set of loops. And those are going to pass through the swivel side of my snap swivel. And this is just a, a snap swivel that you'd find in your fishing department of a um, sporting goods store. All right, and then I'm going to pass the entire snap swivel through the loops and simply bring those down and pull it taut and that will put them all there. All right, now I'm just going to fling this out. You won't be able to see this but you'll hear it. All right, just to make sure that everything is still even and it is. And here I'm going to go ahead and add a little touch of glue to that knot so it doesn't move on me. Okay, so just work it in there and you don't need a lot. I'm going to just wipe off most of that excess there. Okay, and then that can snap onto the eyelet of the nose cone. Now this is what really determines what size snap swivel you need. The swivel side, um, you could use almost any size. They're going to be strong enough. But you do need to have a snap side that's big enough that it will fit over the nose cone eyelet and still allow you to close it. Like that. Okay. Our last job here then, before painting, is to simply tie 
the shock cord onto the nose cone and we will be done with the assembly. I sanded my nose cone and I started with using some 100 grit on the seams to knock those down quickly and then that was followed by 150 grit all over the nose and then followed that with 220 grit all over to, to give a, a nice fine sanding surface here and that still leaves enough toothiness within the plastic to, to hold on to the paint better. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is simply put a double knot of the shock cord through the eyelet here of the nose cone. And this is just like we did on the other end of the shock cord with the baffle mount. Okay, so I'm just going to put in two half hitches here. Just like this. All right, and again, I'm going to leave a little bit so the knot doesn't pull loose. And we can go ahead and put some glue on this. I'm going to wait because I'm going to take this back off so that I can paint my nose cone separately. And that is pretty much the end of it, though. So once you have your parachute installed, everything's dried and ready to go, you'll be ready to launch. And if we put everything together here... Add the booster section. Okay, so we end up with a pretty impressive rocket. I really can't even get the whole thing in here. All right, but there's our, our booster, sustainer, and this goes all the way up to the nose. I suspect this is going to be a really impressive flyer, and I am looking forward to launching it. So I hope you had a good build, and have a successful launch and recovery. And I'll see you next time.